So, where should we start? The, um, um, the, the foreign exchange market is not a, um, obviously a physical market like a, um, you know, an equities uh, bursa or, or a futures market. It is created by a series of credit limits between, uh, between banks. Um, so you call them uh, you know, trading lines or credit limits or whatever you like, but it's basically an agreement between two banks that they will accept trades with each other up to, you know, there could be very large amounts involved here. You know, it could be $5 billion or whatever between Deutsche Bank and Citibank that they agree to trade with each other up to that amount on any particular day. Now, remember, that in, a, in a spot market, there are, um, um, you know, it, it, it's only a two, um, the trade is, I can't even think of the word now, but it's um, two days out, the trade, so you know, new limits are rolling off every day, if you know what I mean. So old trades are, um, are paid up, so one, per one counterparty pays the US dollars and the other counterparty pays the euro, and then that credit line, um, whatever was used up for that particular trade is freed up again. And it's very, very seldom. Really back, you know, the, the back to the 1970s, really, before there, you know, the last time there were any major problems with banks not being able to fulfill um, or live up to any of these trading agreements in, in the spot foreign exchange market. So, um, yeah, the big banks, and they all have credit lines with each other, and um, also the um, central banks would be involved in this. So if you take all the world's largest central banks, um, the Bank for International Settlements, which is the central bank of central banks, and all the big institutional banks and investment banks, um, they... Uh, they have trading lines and agreements with each other that they can do, you know, they can trade up to a certain, am up to a certain amount. So these, all of these counterparties come together in an, an, an primarily an electronic um, broking market. It used to be all a physical broking market, and literally you had guys sitting on desks talking to, you know, each guy might have been talking to 15 or 20 banks, and the banks would put in their bid and they would put in their offer as they sought or as they felt fit. And this is how, you know, the, the market was initially created. And then other banks could deal on those prices or could tighten the spread as they saw fit. And that's what we see today in the in electronic market. Um, the biggest of the uh, um, electronic brokers is called EBS, which you've probably heard of. And on this... Um, all of the big banks and even central banks will put their bids and their offers into the market. And that is how a um, trading market is created. So the big players, um, you may see here, I've listed the sovereigns at the top. The biggest player, without a doubt, when they decide to become active is China. And um, they are probably the only player in the market who's capable of moving, um, moving the market on their own. Um, I've never really seen anybody do it before, but they, um, they have the capability. Um, they're not as active um, recently as they were maybe a year or two years ago. Um, look, at this could be, I'm not sure why that is, policy decisions, don't know. Um, but um, they are very active. As you can imagine, they've got massive reserves, and when they decide to, um, you know, allocate those reserves or trade aggressively with those reserves, then they are going to move the market. Um, they will um, place their interest generally in one of the electronic, in one of the electronic broking um, shops, um, or they will also deal directly on some of the big uh, bank trading platforms. Now, I don't want to confuse matters too much here, but s some of the banks, the big banks particularly, have almost become brokers in a way. Um, if you look at Deutsche Bank and their Autobahn platform, um, now, Deutsche Bank is the biggest player in the market, and their autobahn platform is, in essence, a, a, a broking platform. So Deutsche have gone from being a bank almost to being a broker, um, and their customers and other banks can deal on this platform just like any other, uh, on any other broker. So you would see the big players like China or the BIS or the Asian central banks and the sovereign wealth funds, Middle East, Russia, all of these sovereigns would be you know, putting their bids and their offers onto um, a, a platform such as Autobahn or a plat platform such as EBS. 
that's how we can see from time to time who's doing what. And not every platform tells you exactly how much is being done, the size of the trade. Um, EBS generally does. You can see the amount that's actually on the bid. You can see that's, you know, 72 bid for 312 euros or whatever the case may be. Um, and, and, and that can give you a very good indication as to the depth of the market. And some of the other platforms don't actually show you that um, information. Okay, so we've got the, um, I've called them here the tier one and prime brokers. So there's one set of banks I've separated from the others. Um, the names here are basically uh, Deutsche, Citi, Barcap, UBS. Um, you know, these are the big bank players. They've all got their own um, platforms and they are also prime brokers. Now a prime broker, um, that's also like a credit line with normally between the bank and hedge funds or it could be CTAs or anybody who wants to trade in the market, wants direct access to the market, they sign a prime brokerage agreement with a bank. That allows the client to trade in the market under the bank's name. So it's not uncommon for Deutsche Bank to sell to Deutsche Bank in the market. Now I exaggerate there a little bit in that there are filters I think on these platforms to ensure um, that doesn't happen, but, but it, is, it is actually quite possible that a client of Deutsche, one client of Deutsche Bank is selling to another client of Deutsche Bank on, a, um, on an interbank trading platform and they are both trading under um, Deutsche Bank's name. Um, so if you hear some, you know, sites saying that, oh, you know, big British clearer buying sterling, I mean, that's, you know, that's actually nonsensical information because it could be... Uh, it could be anybody. It could be me if I have a prime brokerage agreement with that particular bank. It could be me just buying under the bank's, on the bank's behalf. So um, who the, to say that any of these big banks are in buying anymore is, is actually not quite true because they have in essence become brokers. And the prime brokerage part of their business is by far and away the biggest part of their business. So the big banks, as I said, you, they're, I call them tier one. They're also prime brokers. They, um, they have trading lines with all of the big hedge funds who I'll come on to in a second and um, they're very very influ influential players. They do not as in the past try and move the market as much as they used to. They are quite happy to earn uh, you know large amounts of money as, um, as brokers, as clearing houses in essence and, and, the, and allowing other, other um, entities to use their technology and their, their credit lines. So, um, yeah, so that's the tier one prime brokerage bank. And then down to the next level, the tier two, um, you know, they're also significant, significant players. Your, um, you know, the U.S. investment houses, uh, Morgan Stanley's, et cetera, the, you know, um, the Credit Suisse's of the world, J.P. Morgan Chase, RBS, HSBC. I mean, you know all the names. Um, these also, in part, have... Um, prime brokerage departments, they've got big, um, you know, corporate clients, um, asset manager, bo you know, bond market clients, um, but what they, where they are not so big is in the, in the actual platforms they own, if, you, if that makes sense. Um, so, so they're the second level, and then you have the third level banks who are basically everybody else, who of course have foreign exchange transactions to, um, to fulfill. Um, but generally speaking, they just go into the market and, and they, they, they're probably clients of, um, of the first, of tier one or tier two banks. 